Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm going to be talking about the variant, the Omicron variant BA 2.86, and whether or not it can evade vaccines. And in this presentation, I'll be covering a few simple topics. I'll be looking at a mirror article that has come out on the 10th of October, looking at the COVID variant and how it's more likely to make people seriously ill. I'll be looking at a Discovery News article on the BA.2.6 being highly immune evasive and also the paper uh, that was produced from Japan that gives some more details around it. So before I start going into that, I want to remind you that I want you to join me. There are still some spaces left for how to prepare for the next wave of the COVID pandemic. This is why I'm speaking about it. It's free. I think that there are donation buttons and I'd be happy for any support. The point being is that I believe in preparing for contingencies. This is about anticipating what can go wrong and what do you do about it. Critical at this stage of the pandemic. Now, there are some people who will say, I'm not concerned at all and that everything that I've been told is going to work because I've been told stuff before and it has worked. That's fine. For those who have questions, then I'd suggest you join me so that we can look at contingencies, things that you can do, things you can ask in order to prepare in case things get worse. Just to remind you as to how I look at things, in, in March 2020, this is a, I found this just this evening, uh, in March 2020, I came up with a coronavirus plan for the elderly in care homes. And it was because I recognized that the research was indicating that people over 80 seemed to be most at risk. They anticipated a 14.8% mortality in that group, which in the UK would have been about 60,000 fatalities in care homes. So we didn't have any solutions. And so I came up with what I thought could be a plan. I was looking at all kinds of things using zinc and acetylcysteine. I was thinking of deep breathing exercises for surfactant. I was looking at angiotensin receptor blockers in case in, in the context of ACE inhibitors. Um, I was looking at frailty, high dose vitamin C. The point being is that I didn't just say, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to think about it because there is very little that I can do. No, I believe that we should always be looking for solutions and be prepared in case whatever we are planning for does not work. So this is where we are now. And this is why I'm encouraging you to join me on that webinar. But let's look at what the newspapers are saying. So this is from the Mirror. This is by Katie Weston, the senior news reporter. And she was then highlighting, so this is her Katie Weston, senior news reporter for the Mirror, updated the 10th of October, 2023. And they are saying here, the new COVID variant detected and it's more likely to make people seriously ill. And they're talking about the Omicron subvariant BA 2.86, which is identified in the UK in August. So this variant is important. And truthfully, I thought that the BA 2.75 last year that was surging in Japan was going to be the big one. Well, it turns out that it did do some impact, but not as significantly as I was worried about. So I recognize that everything I'm concerned about doesn't always happen. But I'm anticipating, similar to GERT, that there will eventually be a massive variant that can make a huge impact on what is happening. And it's because of that concern why I'm looking out for stuff. This here is an example of what the difference is between the Delta and the Omicron variants. So you can see this is red marks in Delta indicate where you have mutations. This was the Delta variant that was significantly different from the wild type. This is Omicron, and this was the early Omicron variant with all of these red marks throughout indicating all these variations, and it has continued to expand over the period of time. So it's a very significant pattern that we're seeing at the moment. We can't ignore it. So here is the 
Discovery News paper that I think was very, very critical. And I've got it up here for you. So what they said, this was the 24th of September, 2023, the BA 2.86 variant is highly immune evasive and antigenically different from the XBB15, the previous Omicron variants. And so it was detected or looked at in August 2023, and they were comparing it to the other Omicron variants to try and understand it. And you can see here authors from China conducted an antigenicity and infective analysis of the SARS-CoV-2 BA26 variant. And this was what they were concerned about. So they were looking at this quite closely in China and Japan to try and understand what was going on and what the relevance of it that it could be for this pandemic. And in conclusion, essentially they said here, the BA286 is antigenically different from the XBB and previous Omicron variants. It is highly immune evasive and may have advantages over current circulating variants on its ability to resist humoral immunity, induced vaccine-induced immunity. And it, it seems to be acquiring additional mutations during its transmission. And they think that it should be very closely monitored. So this could be the beast of the virus that we're talking about. And just to clarify to people, you have to remember how this works. And this is, again, a bit of the basic sciences. This here is an example of the virus. And you can see this gray ball or circle. And on the surface, the blue um, areas represent the spike protein. And then you have in these red and orange areas, the, the, the envelope and the membrane proteins. And you can see the cut section through the virus here. One of the problems in the pandemic is that because most of the vaccines were spike focused, what it means is that any variation to this and the immune system is struggling to control the virus and the replication of the virus. Natural infection tends to give you not only antibodies to the spike protein, but also to the other proteins, the membrane protein and this envelope protein and the nuclear capsid protein. So these make a broader immune response, making it harder for the virus to evade natural immunity. That's a very important point as it, di it differentiates how the virus can infect and who it will infect. And this is another image that I've used previously. And I've said here that this is a virus entering the nasal passages, infecting or spreading down into the lungs. And this is, it has to get past this barrier. This is supposed to be a wall of um, antibodies or IgA antibodies. And the virus, only if it can get past that, can it get into the systemic system to then cause infection. And that's when humoral antibodies kick in in the bloodstream. The problem is that when you use injectable vaccines, you're only strengthening largely this part of the immune system, but not particularly strengthening the IgA or the mucosal immunity. This is something that people get very confused about and therefore they can't understand why it is with that many vaccines across the world why would we see numbers like this from the Cleveland Clinic? And this is a Cleveland Clinic showing that not up to date with vaccination seem to be a lower risk for reinfection than being up to date with vaccination. Very strange pattern. Most importantly, when you look at it, what it is clearly indicating is that if you are vaccinated, there is a significant cumulative incidence of COVID infection. And that's again what we're seeing across different parts of the world. So it's very important for us to understand that this is quite a significant situation and one that we shouldn't take for granted. Here are some other points. When I go looking at the explanation as to why I think that specific approaches may be beneficial, I'll be looking at the science of it. I'll be looking at the paper here that looked at how the virus was able to enter the cells using the cilia, how it used microvilli to cause them to, um, to spread more efficiently, and the mechanisms that can be used to try and inhibit that. I'll be looking at things about the entry of the virus, 
this type of entry where it uses ACE2 and the endosome is what Omicron favors, as opposed to the other the viral entry, which was using TMPRSS. Some of the Omicron variants now are able to do both. Point being is that if you can inhibit this part, it's quite likely that you can slow the viral infection and therefore make an impact on how easily it is spread. We're coming into a difficult time now, and I've always thought that this was the combination of a perfect storm. And the perfect storm is that you have highly evasive variants that are infecting people who are already vaccinated. The reason I'm concerned about that was primarily because of my research into COVID autoimmunity. Now, this has still not been fully accepted by the scientific community. They accept that autoimmunity occurs, but they don't necessarily accept that it is the primary mechanism for severe disease, which is what I believe that it is. And ACE2 and some other proteins binding to the spike protein could be the mechanism that causes this autoimmunity. So when you have a situation with high circulating virus, poor mucosal immunity in the vaccinated, and therefore the potential for subclinical autoimmune responses, we are in for a very frightening time. That's my concern. The big challenge has always been, if you can maintain the virus from getting into the bloodstream, it doesn't matter your vaccination status. The point is that once it gets into the bloodstream, there is the potential for triggering autoimmunity. It may not present a severe disease, but it can still occur. So the challenge is how do we prevent the virus from evading this protector and protection layer and even if it does, is there anything we can do to reduce the impact of this viral infection in the bloodstream? These are serious times. I can only advise people to be prepared. You have to learn to look at options and always think about what if what you've been told will work doesn't work. What are your contingencies? And that's for you as an individual, your family and your loved ones. I hope you'll find this um, important. Please click on the link below if you want to join me on the webinar coming up in a few days. I look forward to sharing some more ideas with you. Have a great evening.